spirit week. I got on my final Bobcat shirt. Um, and this is also our final lesson in uh, this chapter. So way to go for finishing up um, all, all about area and perimeter. Today we are thinking about problem solving, all right? So we know that in the real world, Things aren't always perfect, and sometimes we're going to have to do um, some math involving area and perimeter in order to um, find the right number of um, square units for something. And so we're going to give you two examples today of what that might look like, and then you're going to try something on your own. So let's take a look at this. This is a diagram of a playground, right? So everything that you see in green is the playground, and then this like orangey brownish color, that's the sandbox that's within the playground, okay? The public works department, which you know all about from social studies, is laying grass on this playground. So they're replacing all of the grass on the playground. It's going to um, cover everywhere on the playground except for that square sandbox, right? So our square sandbox that's up here will not have grass covering it, but everywhere else does. What we need to figure out is how many square yards of grass does the public works department need, right? So this is a real problem that they'd have to do. We know that the public works department is in charge of our parks and our playgrounds and everything like that. So this is a real life situation that they would have to figure out. So let's think about what we know. We, we can look at our diagram here and we can find easily the area of the playground. But if we did that, that would include the area of the sandbox, which they told us is not getting any grass. So right now you should already be processing how we're going to step through this. You're probably thinking, all right, well, we could find the area of, and I'm going to call that area of the playground, right, for P, so P for playground, area of the playground, right, we find that total amount, and then we need to find the area of the sandbox, so A, S, right? Then what would we do next? Well, we would subtract that area of the sandbox from the area of the playground, and then that would give us the area that we need to be covered by grass, right? So I put a G there for grass. Right, so our steps here that we're thinking is find the area of the playground, find the area of the sandbox, subtract that from the area of the playground, and then that will give us our final answer, which is the area that we have that will be covered by grass, right? So let's start by using our area formula. We know that area equals base times height. And if we're finding that area of the playground, we know that in this case our base is 25. So area will equal 25 times 15 is our height, right? And if you can't do 25 times 15 in your head, that's okay, let's go off to the side and um, do it vertically, right? So if we do 25 times 15, five times five we know is 25, regroup, five times two is 10 plus two is 12. Add my zero to account for that place value, move on and cross off that two up top so I don't accidentally try to add it again. Five times one, is five, one times two is two, and I can add now. So if I add those up, I get um, five and, over here, five plus zero is five, right? Then um, two plus five is seven, and two plus one is three. So I get 375. So my area of this playground is 375. Now don't forget your units. We know that it's yards, not just yards, it's square. We're putting that small exponent two up top, right? Square yards. Okay, so that was our playground. Now we want to find the area of just the sandbox, right? So we have sandbox. I'm kind of labeling my work as I go so that I don't get confused later on. So the sandbox, I'm using that same formula, area equals base times height. Um, now, hold on, I'm stuck because I only have one unit, right? I only have one measure, that's six yards. How could I possibly figure out my area if I only have one side of my figure? We'll pause, think, go back to your question, what does it tell you? Hopefully, you see that it says square sandbox, right? Since it's a square sandbox, we know that every side is the same. So we know that our base is six and our height is six, right? So we are going to have six times six as our equation to find the area of the sandbox. You know that six times six is 36. So we have 36 yards squared. Again, yards because that's what our 
um, problem is showing us in our diagram, right? Okay, so are we finished? Nope. Yeah, sure, we found the area of the playground, we found the area of the, of the sandbox, but did we find the area um, of grass cover? We haven't yet, right? And if we look back to our big thinking in the beginning, we found that we need to find the area of the playground and the area of the sandbox and then subtract the sandbox area from the playground area. So let's go ahead and do that now. If I go off to this side and write that vertically, I've got 375 minus 36. I'll need to regroup. 15 minus 6 is 9. 6 minus 3 is 3, and I'll bring down that last 3, so I have 339. 339 what? Well, my units stay the same, right? These are both yards squared, so my units are 39, 339 yards squared. That is how much um, uh, grass our public works department will need in order to cover the playground. So I want you to stop and just think here, how did we tackle this problem, right? First, we thought big picture. We worked our way through the diagram and the information that was provided to us. And then we thought of our steps, our big steps that we needed to take, and we wrote those out along the way. Then we started following those steps, annotating our work as we go, right? Noting that we were thinking about the playground, then about the sandbox. Um, and then we did our final step off to this side, and of course, you know, it's always a good idea to kind of circle your work so that you can make sure that your answer is very clear. So thinking this out from start to finish is key when we're thinking about problem solving with um, area and perimeter and really actually anything in math, to be honest, right? Um, all right, let's try one more and then you guys are going to try this on your own. So I want you to imagine that you are um, helping your parents build a beautiful outdoor backyard oasis. You're going to build this lovely patio that's an 18 meters by 20 meters patio. I make that out of brick. And then you're going to include this fountain right here. And this fountain is five meters by two meters. So it's going to be a nice, beautiful little fountain in the middle of your brick patio. Now, stop and think. Are you going to have the bricks covering that fountain part? No, right? But let's just look at our problem to make sure we're on the right track, right? We're laying a new brick patio. There is no brick where that fountain's going to be. So where that fountain is, there's no brick. Our question is, how many square meters of bricks do we need, right? Well, we can use the same process that we did in the previous problem. So I want you to actually give this a try on your own first, and then you can unpause me and give it a try on your own, or with watching me. <laughs> so go ahead and pause me here, try it on your own, and then we'll come back together. All right, hopefully you took a second to pause me. Um, so let's go ahead now and step through this problem, right? We know that we're going to find the area of the patio and we're gonna find the area of the fountain, right? We'll subtract the area of the fountain from the area of the patio and that will give us the area of bricks that we need, right? So let's think about the patio. When we're finding the area of the patio, our uh, formula stays the same, area equals base times height, right? If I look at my patio, I've got a base of 20, my height is 18. So I know that I need to multiply 20 times 18. And if you do that, you're going to find that you have 360 meters squared, right? Now we're thinking, all right, well, what about the area of the fountain, right? Again, keeping my work in, organized and annotated. My area equals base times height. So in this case, I have five times two, right? Five times two, you know, is 10. And my units are still meters, right? So I have 10 meters squared. Now I need to subtract this area, right? I don't want this part, this fountain part. I don't want to put bricks there. So I need to subtract that from my total area of my patio. And if I do 360 meters squared minus 10 meters squared, you get 350 meters squared. So we know that there are 350 square meters of bricks that we need in order to complete this patio. All right, you're gonna be trying to um, home this on your own. I can't wait to see all of your awesome work. Hope that you guys enjoyed Blackwell Spirit Week with me. Uh, and I can't wait to see you later. Bye.